you know, when I'm talking to individuals and I'm interviewing them on, on our podcast or just talking to individuals like this, I would th be thinking about, especially high performers, because I think that genius leaves clues and I believe that it can be replicated if you're willing to put in the, the work and the learning and the, the discipline to be able to do that, then I want to know really, I want to know their beliefs. I want to know what they value. Because if I don't know that, if I'm just working on step-by-step -step hacks and everything else, it won't stick mm. because it's missing a huge part. So I want to model like their behaviors, their values, their beliefs, and also who they think they are that allows them to do those, accomplish those amazing things in their life. And what are some of the clues that genius leaves? So it's interesting when I'm talking about these levels of change, right? The identity level is the who. Right, you know all the, the five W's and the H we learned back in school. The, the identity is who somebody is. When we're talking about beliefs and values, that's the why, why they do what they do. When we're talking about capabilities, that's the how, right? That's the habit, right? The skill acquisition. When we're talking the behavior, that's the what, the what they're doing, right? And then when we're talking about environment, that's really the where and the when, right? So I'm gonna I'm always going back if I want to create change, create a new habit, create a new level of learning for somebody. I'm addressing those different levels, and if I if I ignore one with somebody else or myself, then it's not going to stick, right? Because you're not going to have that congruency where it's going to affect, where it becomes second nature. And so going back to this, I think if I'm modeling genius and genius leaves clues, I'm thinking about, okay, where are they and when are they doing these things? So certain people are early birds, some people are night owls. So I could teach people, like I teach people how to read one book a week. I really think leaders are readers that in order to stay competitive in today's day and age, if somebody has decades of experience and they put it into a book and you can sit down and read that in a few days, download decades in the days, I mean, I'm preaching to choir for everyone who's <laughs> watching, but that, that's, that's a superpower, right? That's a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking about, but some people, when I'm telling them to practice, and I get these results in 30, in, you know, about four or five weeks, where it's permanent, where they can read 300% faster with the same or better comprehension. Essentially read something in 20 minutes that takes, normally takes normal people an hour. Right. But the reason why, but you have to practice, but some people will practice at inopportune times of the day and they won't get the same results. So part of it is the self-awareness, knowing your, what they call your chronotype, when's the optimal time to do this? They, they, for, depending on your body type, there's certain times of the day it's better to work out. There's better times of the day to be able to make love. There's better times of the day to be able to read, to check email, to ask for a raise. So I would think about like if I, geniuses found, they find their element, their sweet spot, and they set up their routines and their rituals throughout the day to be able to align with their time when they're most productive, mm -hmm. right? If they're not if they don't have a lot of energy in the morning, working out is probably not as good as doing it some other time. Um, so the when and the where and setting up your environment for success because all your triggers are there that allow them. So I think geniuses set themselves up. So for example, they have their laptop, but they only use their laptop for work and it's anchored. That's part of their environment. It's anchored to get them into flow states to be able to write or be productive. They don't use their laptop to watch binge on Netflix, right? They have a very, they have an iPad that they use when they do that because that's the state that they want to anchor for that. And they don't use that iPad to do work. You know, setting up your environment like your bedroom. Like we just did a whole episode on sleep hacks and how to optimize your sleep because that's a big, you know, personal challenge for me um, for many years because I had suffered from sleep apnea. It was a breathing disorder. I stopped breathing 200 times a night for at least 10 seconds, which is the equivalent of somebody coming in and just choking and suffocating you 200 times a night. That's and great. so I would actually, the reason why I'm so adamant about productivity and learning hacks is because for the longest time, for literally five years straight, and you know this, I've slept about 90 minutes to two hours a night total. And you know how you feel when you get like one bad night of yes. sleep and how like where your focus is, your energy level, and your, how I get these horrible migraines. And it's forced me to double down in my practices, you know, in terms of like I have a limited amount of time. I have to focus on the things that really matter, resources and stuff. But anyway, going back to this, like my bedroom is sacred space. Right? It's, I don't do work in there. I, I keep it because that's my trigger to be able to rest, go into parasympathetic right. space. I set up my environment so I have my blackout curtains, I have my grounding pad, so it's to optimize my restful sleep that I do get. So environment, so genius leaves clues, they set up genius environments for themselves. And then the behaviors, most people know because they're intuitive. You know, these people are, are, are investing in themselves, they're, they're investing in self-care. Um, I always tell people that self-love and self-care is not selfish. A lot of people, you know, they're there for their friends and their family and their clients and everybody else, but they're not refilling their, their cup. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to be, you know, grow givers, meaning we have to, we grow so we have more to give to other people. So we have more impact with other individuals. So the behaviors are reading each day and putting together your to-do list and your, I think having your not to-do list is so important. Having being sleep deprived for so many years, you know, I think a lot of people, I'm super sensitized to it, but I think one of the success rituals people have, should have is just going through and keeping a consistent not-to-do list. 
And I think the most successful genius level individuals, one of the clues that they leave is their not to do list is bigger than their to do list, right? They don't check their phone in the morning. They don't take in, you know, everything is hell yes or it's hell no, right? That's their filter system. They don't, you know, they say no to good. So they can say yes, yes to great. Mm. Um, so the behaviors, then you have the, the habits, which, and then you have the, the beliefs and the values and beliefs and the values, you know, because I, I watch, this is one of the reasons why I, wa- I watch your show. Because I'm just hearing all the time you're listening to these amazing beliefs and values from achievers in all every area. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you have Wyclef there, you know, and like Mel, and you have all these amazing individuals, but you see that there's a pattern that's there, mm. right? And there's an art, and but there's a science to it there, and there's an art to it and how they express themselves. And then I also do believe that some of those successful geniuses, and I say geniuses, not just I, I'm not talking about IQ, right? I'm talking about an incredible you know, artist, I'm talking about an athlete, I'm talking about an advocate, you know, in some area, um, is they haven't, they're, they're clear about their identity, about who they are and who they are to the, to the world. And so, but I know what they, what they do commit is they do the work and they're committed to lifelong learning. And I feel like that learning, I always tell people, and we've had this, we had this conversation that if knowledge is power, then learning is your superpower. And I think it's a superpower that we all have. It's just that we're not taught. Like recently we had, a. Uh, Quincy Jones in our audience, and I had to pull him on stage, right? And I was just like, I was like, I have to ask you, you know, we are the world, and Michael Jackson, and Oprah, like, you know, what did you, how did you overcome these challenges, that, you know, these problems that you had to be able to create this, you know, this legacy? And he looked at me, he's like, Jim, he's like, I don't have any problems. I'm like, what do you mean? You're like, you're 84, you have no problems? And she's like, no, I have puzzles. And I was like, wow, like that little shift of vocabulary changed everything for me. Yeah, because puzzles are like riddles. They could, you could, you could solve, you could solve them, right? There's answers for it. And it was a change of perspective. And that was the thing about growing up with superheroes, reading these comic books late at night when I was so impressionable, is for me, a superhero more than anything represents hope. Do you know what I mean? That one person can make a difference. And a lot of superheroes go through a lot of challenges, right? When you think about the most popular superheroes, they're all orphans. Like Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, Iron Man, Spider Man, they all lost their parents, you know, and they all through these big challenges, but through it they they found their their Dharma, they found their mission. And I find that if someone's watching this and they haven't found it quite yet, maybe I have a belief that that their mission and that people's mission, their purpose and their pattern is looking for them also. But most of us aren't sensitized to it, you know, because it's coming in different forms and we're not open to it as much. And so my my thing when it comes to success rituals and high performance and, and making an impact is that we all have that sovereignty, we all have that power, and whenever we put it out there and give it out to somebody else, like we're a thermometer, right? The metaphor I always talk about, it's like we're either therm- thermometers or we're thermostats. And a thermometer, you think about the functionality of it, it just reflects what the environment is giving it, right? It just reflects the, the temperature and stuff, but a thermostat is different. It sets it a standard, it sets a goal, it sets a vision, and the environment changes along with it. And I feel like our happiness, our joy, our level of fulfillment, our success is all dependent on where we put the locus of control. And I feel like we have more power than we realize in these cases. And it's hard because we have to fight media, we have to fight marketing that's always telling us about all the things that are going on in the world. But we live in an abundant universe, right? I mean, we talk about the matrix, you know, which pill people are going to take. And that determines everything. And every single morning, you determine what color pill you're going to take. 